Well, today we want to talk about how to use photographic reference. And we all use photographs. They're a great tool to use. Um, when you're first starting out in painting, it's better to paint outside. Uh, it's better to learn how to see colors and mix them from life than from photographs because photographs just don't have even really good photographs. There's just some lacking subtleties in the, in, in the color changes and the value changes. Um, not to say that you can't learn from photographs. I still learn a lot using photographic reference, but um, outside I think you learn a little, little bit better. But as a tool for painting in the studio, they're, they're really invaluable. But we want to understand their limitations and, and how to change those when we're painting. And a lot of things, um, you know, depends on lighting conditions, the type of camera. Uh, but a lot of times the values would be really off. In this particular photograph, the lights up here I'm trying to get this here we go. The lights up here are just washed out. The sky has no no color in it. Um, same thing with the lights on the green grass down here, some of the lights on the foliage. It just becomes a glare without any um, without any color or any color temperature to it. So I want to be able to um, know when the photograph is off value wise and, and think in terms of value and temperature to get the color I want, not necessarily local color. This photo is not too bad as far as the darks go because the camera is picking up uh, the darks more than they are the lights. And that's usually how it is with my photographic references. The lights are either washed out, way too light, um, and the shadows look pretty good. Or the camera picks up the light areas and gets color in them and color temperature and a good value, but then the darks go too black. So I'm always adjusting when I'm using photographs, thinking in terms of what I need to change. It also lacks in terms of depth. Uh, a lot of times the camera does not have good depth. This, you know, not too bad in here. These uh, darks in the background, they're a little lighter darks, they're cooler, and they recede into the background, which is what things do is they recede, they get lighter and, and uh, cooler in uh, color temperature. Uh, but a lot of times it flattens out. You'll have a dark way in the distance, back in the background, let's say back in here, that's just as dark as the darkest trunk of the tree in the foreground. And again, that flattened things out. So photographs lack depth because of not picking up enough value changes, enough temperature changes. So you want to be aware of how to change those things. Um, this particular photograph is in um, Oak Creek Canyon in Sedona, Arizona. And what the camera does here with all the clutter of all the trees, the foliage, the rocks, the camera sees everything uh, the same. Everything has a sharp edge to it. Everything is well defined. There's just as much detail up in here as there is here, as there is in the rocks. So we need to uh, not see the photograph like a, or see the what we're painting like the camera does. We want to focus on our center of interest, which is roughly. Oh, in here. And this is, this is where I want my harder edges on some of the rocks, the trunks, the strong light against the dark. I want to keep the edges a little bit harder. Then as I move out from there, everything's going to get a little softer. Uh, edges are going to soften. Contrast won't be quite as sharp. Uh, so, again, I, I don't want to see... I don't want my painting to look like the photograph in the sense that everything is sharpened and well defined. And all this means getting away from just copying the photograph, using values, color temperature, and edges uh, to create a different look than what the photograph has. And lastly, I want to unclutter what the photograph does, and that's what we're going to mainly talk about here, is everything is so cluttered, I can't really tell when I'm looking... Um, you know, in this area, which trees are in the foreground, which are in the middle ground, which in the background. It looks like a jumbled mess. 
uh, which in nature it is, but there has to be some separation of layers of trees. And I usually don't go beyond three or four layers to get back to the background. But I want to push and pull uh, values together, simplify the light, simplify the darks, and have three or four different layers. Or I'm sorry, um, well, yeah, three or four different layers of trees to suggest the depth. So this is what I did. Starting with the sky, um, the photographs washed out, has no temperature in the sky. So we're yeah, everything's backlit. I'm looking into the sun for the most part. The sun's in front of the viewer, a little to the right. So a warm sky, I see that as the equivalent of white and cad yellow. Um, I could always modify that a little bit with some blues or violets, but uh, that's my overall t value and temperature, color temperature for the sky. Then separating the background, um, having that the bluest part in the painting, so that stays back the furthest. Then in here I have the next layer, a little darker, blue-green instead of blue, but still on the bluish side. And then the layers here, this is all one layer of trees, these warmer trees. Um, the warmer yellow shadows, the warmer orange shadows, and then the light. So I have three layers of trees there. One, two, and three. Um, and then on the ground, I have uh, the dark and light green here, and the light and dark orange, and then the values of the water and the rocks. Everything is simplified to just two values, um, and, and whether they're in the foreground, middle ground, or background. And if I can see it that way, it's a lot easier to paint that. So back and forth, you can see the simplification. Now in my painting, I want to soften edges. I want to push and pull things, so I get some of this look and some of the clutter of the bare branches. But I have to see it this way first. I have to sort this out. This is more the block-in stage of the painting and later coming back with variations of, of colors that I see in the photograph. But again, that simplification, if I can read the photograph that way, it's going to be easier to paint. And for me, it has to get to this stage before I can go to the next stage. That's where I'm, I'm softening edges, adding detail, uh, some broken color. But this is what I want to get to. This is the if I can get it to a stage like this that makes or breaks the painting, not the finish or the detail. The next one here. This is a, um, a church and um, a kind of a field near Albuquerque, New Mexico, and. Nice lighting. It's uh, late in the afternoon. Long shadows. First thing I'm going to do when I get to a photograph is decide how I can crop it. Um, so I zoom in on what I think is important. And for me it's a suggestion of the church. Some of these trees maybe a little bit bigger. More like that. That's kind of my, not my focal point, but that's the area I want to show. Uh, so I would crop it did that already to about here and I'm zooming in to what I consider the most interesting. Now within this area I can decide my center of interest is this area or maybe that area. Um, and it doesn't matter too much which one. I almost find this more interesting than that. I almost find the tree and the kind of the adobe barn there a bit more interesting than the than the church just because of the color variation, the value changes um, but I have the same problem here, there's a lot of clutter, a lot of detail again the camera picks up just as much detail in the trees up here um, as you know as it does in the trees back in here and I have to sort through all the junk in here so I want to be able to see the photograph in such a way that that makes it read better. Something I can see in terms of simple values, simple color temperature, simple shapes, and least of all local color, what the actual color is. It's the value and color temperature that's going to suggest the light. So I pull things together a little bit 
And this is how I want to see it. As I'm drawing on the canvas, I want to draw these big shapes. Um, and again, the color doesn't matter. I could rearrange these colors to anything I want. Um, I can make it more but later fall, early fall, spring, summer. I could make the trees uh, blue-green, orange-green, yellow-green. You know, the grass can be an orange or red, um, a green. What matters, again, is the value. The value changes between the light and the dark in each of these big areas. Um, and then the temperature. Shadows cooler, sunlit areas warmer. But the values are most important. Now, I really simplified the clutter. I pulled the darks together in a big pattern. You can see how it looked before all that junk in there. As I'm drawing and filling in big areas of color, blocking in, this is how I want my painting to look. Same thing with the tree here. Now I'd come back, lose the edges, add detail, broken color, but this is the simplification I want. Same thing in the background. A lot of clutter in there, a lot of detail, and I'm pulling it together into colors that are going to recede. The kind of muted violets, muted blue-greens, muted red-violet here. Uh, the slightly darker blue-greens in front. And then, again, pulling the darks together into one big shape. Pull the clutter together in there and then the darks of the trees. I also want to rearrange or redesign the shape of the foliage up in here. Um, make shapes that read better as a painting, despite what the photograph or if I'm outside what I'm seeing. Pull them together to bigger, into bigger clumps that are easier to read. Than, um, than just copying the photograph. So, um, so if I can simplify things, and you can do this on the computer, you can do this uh, on a sketchbook, just using black and white, finding the big shadow pattern, and simplifying the shapes. Um, and a lot of times, if it's really complicated, I'm doing a, a bigger painting, I'll do three or four, six by eights, five by seven, little color studies to separate these shapes. Again, just to make it easier to see the photograph. Eliminate detail, fix value problems, and fix color temperature problems. I have uh, one more here. This is uh, a ranch up in Wyoming, um, close to Dubois, Wyoming. And I really like the hill, uh, especially the idea of the, let me make this a little smaller, this rolling hill, these shapes, counterbalancing lines here. This is what really made me want to, and then also the, the rolling hill that the barn is on. Is on. Um, all these lines, these angles, uh, it made just a nice composition. Really, and then, of course, the, the barn set in there. But um, the problem with this is um, everything flattens. The green tree here just blends into the background. The values on the hill are about the same as on the tree. The values of the grass are about the same as the tree. You know, not a, a big jump in value between these trees and the grass here, or even here for that matter. I want a lot of value changes between those planes. Oops, that's what it will look like. Um, I want the, you know, the tree values in the background to be slightly lighter, cooler, and the trees in the foreground a little brighter and warmer. And I want to separate both the trees in background and foreground from the value of the grass in the uh, foreground. Um, but the composition is set up. Nothing is separated. And if I paint it this way, it's just going to be flat. So the changes are here. Um, really cooling off the background. Uh, that's the two values of, 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 of green. The trees further away or just a muted blue. I would say blue with a touch of orange or blue with a little ochre. Here, less white, blue with a little bit of ochre. Uh, and then the stronger, I'm using more cad yellows in the uh, trees up in here because they're closer. And more cad yellow in the field in here again because that 
cad yellow is very strong, very warm yellow, and it pulls it forward. The blue and ochre, ochre's um, earth color, it has all three primaries in it, and it's going to uh, look a lot more muted when I mix it with the blue. So, uh, and then separating the value of the field here with the trees and with the mountain, slanted plane on the mountain. So simplifying, um, and again, this is minus any detail, minus broken color. It's just simplifying the shapes so it's not so cluttered. I do like the bare, um, you know, the dead uh, pine trees up in the hill. A lot of variation can go up on in here, but I have to see it this way first. This is easier to look at and read than that. So I want to pull things together instead of seeing all the detail.